Hotep African family. Yeah. Yeah. For those who don't know, Hotep means peace in the ancient committed tongue. Today's lecture is entitled, The Verdict is In. Um, Sister Shirley kind of gave me that idea when I was doing this the other night. The verdict is in. What does that mean? That means that a whole lot of thought has been out there. A whole lot of contemplation has been out there. Okay? And the verdict is in. The verdict is in because the evidence speaks for itself. I pray that in today's uh, presentation that you will see where the theft of Africa took place. I pray that you will see how the Europeans went in to Kemet, copied, stole, plagiarized, and represented our own story back to us under their ethnicity. Let me start by telling you how I came into all this. After a combined total of approximately 30 years of pastoring, and what I mean by combined total, I mean that um, I was pastoring two churches. And you take the years from both churches and put them together, it would have been about 30 years of pastoral experience. And, and a group of brothers invited me to a meeting a black economic empowerment meeting, not a theology meeting, an economic empowerment meeting. What can we as black folk do to empower ourselves economically? And we had a good little forum of brothers there. <laughs> I overheard this one brother say, Jesus' real name was Horace. The original Christ's name was Horace. I completely forgot what we met for. I immediately stepped to this brother. He wasn't even talking to me. I stepped over to him in combat readiness. Ex-Marine. And I was ready to actually fight this brother. And I said, excuse me, man, what did you say? And when I'm really upset, one of my eyebrows kind of like goes up, you know? And he said, about what, brother? I said, you said something about Horace. And I thought he was saying H-O-R-A-C-E. Never heard of Horace, H-O-R-U-S, before. And I told him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. You're an evil one. You come to hinder, but God bind you in the name of Jesus. And not only did I blast this brother, I blasted all of the brothers that were present in the room because I felt all of them were agents of Satan. I felt it was my duty to protect my community from these black men who look like me. I'm so glad that they had patience on my ignorance. Oh man, about Three years later, I was coming out of City Hall in Patterson, New Jersey, and there was this old bookstore there called Bazaar Books. And I grew up looking at this store, passed it thousands of times, never moved to go in it. But this particular day, I was moved to go in this store, and I did. And when I stepped inside, I said to the brother, I said, man, listen, where's your religion and philosophy section? So he pointed me to it, and I went there, and the books were just in a pile. It was a used bookstore. And as I began to go through the pile, I came upon this book called Osiris and the Egyptian Resurrection. Now, what's deep about this is <laughs> when I saw Egyptian Resurrection, I said, what the hell is this? What kind of resurrection is Egyptian resurrection? The only resurrection I'd ever heard about in my life was the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of me and everybody else who believed on him. And I was looking forward to that resurrection so I could be caught up. 
I opened the cover of this book, and here's what it said. Anyone who has your Bible, please turn to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 55. All right? I have Minister Mitchell. She's going to help read these passages for you. But I want you to see it in your Bible if you have it. When I opened the inside cover of this book, here's what it said. And you see it here on the screen. It said, the central figure of the ancient Egyptian religion was Osiris. And the chief fundamentals of his cult were the belief in his divinity, death, resurrection, and absolute control of the destinies of the bodies and souls of men. I'm already messed up. <laughs> the central point of each Osiris religion was his hope of resurrection. Y'all see it? Yes. His hope of resurrection in a transformed body and of immortality, which can only be realized him, realized by him through the death and resurrection of Osiris. Now, I messed up, y'all, because I have been preaching this for almost 20 years. But it wasn't about Osiris. It's about that dude. <laughs> this blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy who we've all been taught to call who? Jesus. Jesus. Now, Minister Mitchell, if you would, please read 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 50 through 55. What does it say? Now this I say, brethren. Now this I say, brethren. That flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Right. Behold, I show you a mystery. Mm -hmm. We shall not all see. Let me, before you go any further, have y'all heard this before? Yes. Okay, read on. But we shall all be changed. Right. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Mm. At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Incorruptible, yes. And we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. Changed from mortal to what? Immortal. You got it, immortality. We used to sing that when I was growing up. Change from mortal to immortality. In the twinkling of an eye. Y'all know that? We shall be changed. Hope of resurrection and a transformed body. But again, I'm thinking it's this character here. <laughs> now, this is some deep stuff because it says here, the Egyptians. Now, I was raised to see the Egyptians as sinners. All through the Bible, Egypt is the place of sin. The Bible exhorts you, come out of Egypt. Don't go back. Here's what it says. Egypt possessed conceptions of truth, justice, and righteousness. Y'all see it? <laughs> According to these, the life everlasting in heaven. You mean the ancient Africans talked about going to heaven when they died? See, that's the number one question you're going to get asked when you make your transformation. They're going to ask you, but where, where, where are you going to go when you die? Right. Let them know the same place ancient Africans have been saying all the time, that the white man stole from us. And they call it heaven. Right. And the kingdom of Osiris could only be attained by those who had done what? Lived righteous lives upon earth and who had been declared to be speakers of the truth in the judgment hall of Osiris. In the judgment hall of Osiris. Now, that's some deep stuff. The Egyptians set truth speaking above all other virtues and in the great judgment. You mean tell me the ancient Africans talked about a great judgment? Yes, yes. yes they did. In fact, brothers and sisters, it's depicted in this drawing. Turn to John 5, 22. 27. Turn quickly. I got a lot of pictures to go through. I'm, saying, I'm moving so slow, I'm going to run out of time, so I got to, got to move real quick. John 5, 22. I'll quote it for you. For the Father judges no man. I think that's what it says, right? 
What is it going to say? For the Father judges no man. Yes. But have committed all judgment. But unto have the submitted son. all judgment to the Son. What does the 27th verse say? And have given him authority to execute judgment also. And have given the Son authority to execute judgment also. How about 2 Corinthians 5 and 10? Second Corinthians 5th chapter 10 verse. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of who? Christ. Who? Christ. How many of y'all grew up here in that? Yes. Okay, now that's some deep stuff. Because that's what the biblical text says, but this is where they got it from. Now this is a pictograph. And in this pictograph, you see Osiris dressed in white. In this pictograph, his face is white too, by the way. I'm going to mess you up in a minute. <laughs> and you also see the person being judged standing before Osiris at the great white throne. Now, obviously he's standing there, but he has the scales upon his shoulders. They took that and put it in the Bible. Yes, yes. Who was it? Nebuchadnezzar, one of the kings? Yes. And the dream, the interpreter said, it means uh, tekel, tekel, something writing on the wall means you've been weighed in the balances and found, who knows what the rest said? One thing, thank you. You see, it had to come from here because there was no Nebuchadnezzar. Here you have the brother being judged, the pig, the swine, on the boat represents Set, or Satan, which became Satan in European theology. Here you have the nine gods, or representing the nine levels of life. And those of you who know anything about numerology, you know that when you get to the number nine, you have reached the pinnacle, and at that point, you go into the summum bonum, or the supreme good. That's a pictograph. There it is on the wall. That's what I'm talking about. and see where they got it from. What color is Osiris there, y'all? What color? Yes. Thank you. Why? Because the word Osiris means Lord of the perfect black. <laughs> well, the spread of the cult was rapid both in Upper Egypt and in the Delta. And by the way, don't, don't get messed up by the word cult. See how they control our thinking? We think the word cult means something bad. The word cult simply means that's the way a people do things. Cult is the root word of culture. Cult is the root word of cultivate. You follow what I'm saying? Because no other cult offered to its adherents the hope of the resurrection and immortality. Now this is some deep stuff. Notice what it says about Osiris. His human nature, they thought, enabled his human nature. His human nature. Okay, this is where they stole the idea of the two natures of Jesus. His divine nature and his human nature. His human nature, they thought, enabled him to understand the needs, troubles, and griefs of men and listen sympathetically to their prayers. And his divine nature, his divine nature, gave him powers to help them in this world and in the next, which no other ancestor God ever possessed. Y'all see that? Read Hebrews 4.15. For we have not a high priest. For we don't have a high priest. 
which cannot be touched with the feelings, which cannot of, our be with the feelings of our infirmities. But was in all points tempted like as we are. But was in all points tempted like as we are. And why were we taught that Jesus was tempted in all points like us? Because of his human nature. Yet without sin because of his divine nature. Look at the person next to you. Now, I know I'm getting ready to mess with somebody, but y'all didn't come for me to play with you at this time. So let me say it like it is. Look at the person next to you and say, Jesus didn't exist. <laughs> so they got this human and divine nature from somebody else. Please understand that. They stole it from Africa. They stole our story and put their ethnicity on it. Uh, in addition to Osiris, and see a lot of people tell you that Africans were polytheistic. They say the Africans, the Egyptians worshiped many gods. Not true. It tells you here, the Egyptians paid divine honors, not worship, divine honors to the sun god, the moon god, the air god, the water god, the sky god, the earth god, the Nile god, and to a host of spirits of whom we know the names of about 3,000. Now when people read that they say, see all them gods, Africans worship, but yet I can say Jehovah Rasa, Jehovah Nisi, you get the picture? I mean, nobody got a problem with it. Only thing the Africans did is they acknowledged the attributes of God that were manifested in various aspects of creation. What relation all these gods and spirits bore to each other and to Osiris is not at first clear, and it is the realization of the existence of these which has induced some writers to declare that the Egyptian religion was nothing but a polytheistic cult. And yet it was not, it says, for the Egyptians believed in the existence of one great God, self-produced, self-existent, almighty, and eternal, who created the gods, not angels. You don't find the word angels in African theology. Okay? The heavens and the sun, moon and stars and them and the earth and everything on it, including man, beast, bird, fish, and reptile. They believed that he maintained in being everything which he had created and that he was the support of the universe and Lord of it all. So you see, brothers and sisters, the ancient Africans only believed in one great God. What's really deep about it is, it says here, on rare occasions in which he is mentioned in their writings, he is always called Netta. Meaning God, and besides this, he has no name. The ancient Africans once, they, they didn't try that stuff. They did not try to get into arguments over the name of God. Because they knew. What does Acts 7, 20 through 22 say? Now this is some deep stuff, y'all. What does it say? In which time, In Moses, which time Moses, Moses was born. Who? Moses. Moses was born and what? And was exceeding fair. And was exceeding fair. And nourished up in his father's house. And three nourished months. up in his father's house three months. And what happened? And when he was cast out. Now before, before you go any further, let me let me help you. Moses didn't exist either. All right. Okay? But it's a part of their story. We're going, I'm gonna show you. We're going to get to Moses in a minute, okay? But their story created a guy called Moses. And it tells you according to their story in the seventh chapter of Acts, verses 20 through 22, it goes on to say he was exceeding fair, raised up in his father's house three months, and what happened? And when he was cast out. And when he was cast out, what happened? Pharaoh's daughter took him Pharaoh's up. Pharaoh's daughter took him up. And nourished him for her own son. And nourished him for her own son. And then what does it say? Now check this out. What does it say? And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. And Moses, the one that they told you had a speech impediment. Oh, yeah. The one that they told 
you couldn't speak clearly, so Aaron had to do the talking for him. Right. Ain't that what y'all was taught? Right. Well, notice what it says here in Acts. It says he was mighty. Well, in words, in and, words in and in deeds. <laughs> Contradiction. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's getting ready to get real good now. Osiris, those who can see it, what does it say? Was the great word. Y'all see that? Osiris. Turn to John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. How is word spelled there? Capital W. Capital w -O -R -D. In the beginning was the word. Go ahead. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Third verse, what does it say? All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made. You still see made. what's happening here? Do you see what's happening here? Let me read about Osiris, the story that existed at least 10,000 years before John 1 and 1. Osiris was the great word. In other words, Osiris, the word, capital W-O-R-D, spake the words through which all things in heaven came into being from non-existence. Read that third verse again. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. And without him. And without him was not anything was made. Not anything made. That was made. Now that's some deep stuff. Y'all see the theft of it? It's a perfect copy. Look at the bottom here. It talks about Osiris. Osiris was the first man who raised himself from the dead. 10,000 years BC at least. What does Acts 26 and 23 say? That Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Now who rose from the dead first? Lazarus. Well, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. This is 10,000 years early. Now if there's going to be a first, I would, I would say it would be the African story. Okay? Osiris is the typical God-man. Now, before y'all get too much too deep into this, am I preaching Osiris? No. I'm trying to show you where they stole their story from. You follow what I'm saying? Because the truth of the matter is, Osiris didn't exist either. It's all myth. Six thousand 
nine years old, right? Come on, man, give me a break. <laughs> okay, let's get to some evidence here now. You saw the, the literature that was instrumental in turning my life around. That one book, I said, this is so, I got to do some more reading, I got to do some more research. And then the reading was insufficient. I said, okay, I see all this. Now I need to go to Egypt. I need to go see for myself what is. Now, here's the thing I want you to, I don't know how many of y'all have ever heard of Jerusalem before. I don't know how many of y'all have ever heard of, of the, 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 the footsteps where Jesus walked. And, the, and Calvary's Hill and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and when you go to church, every Baptist preacher must conclude his message with a trip to Calvary. Got to get you to Calvary. If you go to Jerusalem right now, there's not one pebble in Jerusalem, not one stone of a temple called Solomon's Temple. There's not one stone of any tomb mentioned in the Bible. When you go over there, you know what they'll say to you? They'll say, it is believed that this was the place of the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea where they laid Jesus. It is believed. When you go over there, they'll say, it is believed that this was the, the road that led to Golgotha's hill. It is believed. Guess what, y'all? I do not have to say, it is believed that this is the bent pyramid of Sneferu. Can I get an ashe? We standing there looking at it. That's, where, that's the brother over there, he and I. We're standing there looking at this thing in awe. Now, I, many times I've been there, I can't help it. When I stand in front of this thing, I get in awe all over again. Yes. 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 Now, see, we're standing back looking at this. It doesn't look that big because we're kind of far back from it. This is the bent pyramid of Sneferu. On the Giza Plateau, you got three pyramids, you'll see them. This is the father, granddaddy of those three pharaohs. There's an example of how big each block is in this pyramid. That's the corner there. That's sister from New Jersey who said, I made it! <laughs> you know, it's one thing to look at the Discovery Channel and see this stuff. It's another thing to go there and touch it for yourself. Now, the deep thing is you saw an imperfect pyramid. The Egyptians were very, very particular about things. When they saw, when he, when Stephen saw that the pyramid was bent, that's why it's called, he made them build him another one. And that's this one back here. The perfect pyramid of Sneferu. And here we are getting ready to climb into it. Y'all, I'm telling you, I, 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 I could stand here for the next week and not transmit to you the essence of this experience. Here's, we have to climb up these steps uh -huh. yes. into that entrance right there. Right. Here you see Minister Eldridge <laughs> going down the shaft of that pyramid. You see how smart you see, gotta bend over to get down in it, right? Here's the deep thing, people. Down inside the womb of this pyramid. Now, can y'all see these little circles here? Look like little water spots? I thought it was something wrong with the lens of my camera. I can't explain this to you until people start sharing their photos with me. And everybody's photos that I have of this, of the inside of this pyramid, those little spots are on their lens or on their photos as well. See them? Okay. See them? I can't tell you what it is. It's almost like, man, mm, you know, one kind of things because 
When you step, it's the same camera. When I go to other photos, you won't see them. Here they are again. Don't pay no attention to my stomach there, okay? <laughs> we finally came up out of the thing. No spots. Everybody's camera, same thing. Is it possible? Is it just possible that when we were down there calling, see, we got down in there and we start saying, all ancestors, block of a thousand midnight. Man, is called the tomb of Mereruka <laughs> in the city of Sakata. Now this is some deep stuff, y'all, because I want y'all to see something here. That sign right there says no photo. I don't know how many of y'all remember when I came back a few years ago, I said, brothers and sisters, go get the evidence while you can. Because now you can't take any pictures in there at all. Why not? Because the evidence is in that tomb. Evidence that they don't want the world to see. Here's entering the tomb. Now, for those brothers of the craft, if I got any here, this brother got on something called an apron. Got on an apron. He has the tyler's implement of his office there in his hand. Meruka. Here he is. This is what they don't want you to take a picture of. Why is that? Because if you take a picture of this, you can come back and show the whole world that masonry is here. It didn't begin in 1717 with some white folk in England. Now you see why they're stopping you from taking pictures there. There he is, Meruka, Grandmaster. Here he is, playing chess. They stole that too. Here it is, fishing. Now, this is just a close-up picture of them fishing here. But if you pull back on the lens, you see all up here are the boats that are coming over to help these men pull these fish into their boat. If you turn to your Bibles, you'll see where that was copied to. Because they told Jesus, launch out into the deep and throw in your net for a draught. And the Bible says they caught so many fish that they had to call the other boats over. That's where they stole it from, right here in the temple of Meruka. That's why they don't want you to take the pictures. What does Luke 15, 3, 3 through 6 say? Check this out, y'all. And he spake this parable unto them, saying. And, and he spake this parable unto them, saying. What man of you having, what man of you having an hundred sheep, a hundred sheep if, he lose one of them, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine, don't leave the 99 in the wilderness, in the and wilderness go, after go after that one which is lost, which is lost until he finds find it? And what happens? And when he has found it, and when he has found it, what does he do? He lays it on his shoulders. He lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together. You his got family. it. That's fine. That's where this comes from. Got it. That's their story right there. Little sheep on his shoulders. But the problem is Jesus didn't teach that parable. Y'all know why? He didn't exist to teach that parable. So where did that story come from? The tomb of Mereruka. And when he found it, he 
There it is, y'all. That's, that's not a picture. That's the wall. We left there and went to the first Grand Lodge on the planet. The Step Pyramid of Sakata, known as the Pyramid of Zosier, Netherkek. The oldest Grand Lodge, the first mud brick pyramid on this planet. Dates back way before anything you want to find in the biblical account. What's really deep about it is they stole this too and put it in the Bible. In the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter, it says in the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And God came down to see the tower which the children of men built. And it says in the 11th chapter of Genesis that God saw that the people were one. They were one. They were in union with, union with each other. And it says, and God said among himself, supposedly whoever that was, let us go down there and confound their speech so they can't understand each other when they talk. Because we don't confound their speech. Nothing that they attempt to do will be stopped from them. I'm talking about the unity of African empowerment. This is the tower that the children of men built. We went to the back side of it. And we saw this little opening. And it's deep because it's like the ancestor Zosier never checked. So if y'all come close, come close and look in here so you can get a good look at me. You look down in there and you see Zosia looking right back at you. That's the evidence, y'all. The verdict is in. I don't have to stand here and say, this is where Zosia, it is believed this is where Zosia was. <laughs> city of Menefer. This is the Ramesseum in the city of Menefer. And inside the Ramesseum, you see a 15-ton statue, one solid piece of stone of Ursa Ma'akra Setepera Rametsu Meriyama. I'm feeling this thing talking about it. And anyone who went with me, I know you're feeling it too. This thing is awesome. Now, let me tell you what's so awesome about this. All over Kenneth, from the mouth of the Nile all the way down to the, from the opening of the Nile to the, up south to the mouth of the Nile, all you see is statues of Ramses the Set. Yes. That's what the Greeks call them. Yes. The Africans know them as Ursa Ma'akra Setep. Come on, let me show you how to say it. Say Ursa. Ursa. Ma'akra. Ma'akra. Ma'ametsu. Meriyama. That's his name. And all over Kemet, this great pharaoh, statues of him everywhere, temples for him everywhere, because he was an awesome African king. The Bible made him a bad man. This is the Pharaoh that supposedly held the, the, the Hebrews in, in bondage. This is supposedly the Pharaoh that God sent Moses to, who didn't exist either, to tell him, let my people go. Look at this. They still love this man. Here you have a man standing there, and if you were that guy right there standing next to this and made a right face, this is what you'd see. I mean, just his face would be so massive right in front of you. One solid piece of stone, and look at the detail. Look at the detail. Over in the corner, there was a statue of the Trois. That's the bot, the lower torso of the twop. The white man calls them pygmies. No, 
Once you understand who the Twa was, you get big respect for him, brother. You don't laugh at him. You don't call him a little midget and laugh at him. You understand that all of the knowledge that the earth has came from these people. The triad of Menephra, Ptah, Sekhmet, and Nephratum. You can tell how old it is. Look how, look, I mean, look how worn it is. There's Ursa Matras, Atep, and Ra, Ramet Sumeriam, and at, at the uh, city of Menephra, standing with his left foot forward. And you'll see that all over Timmy. Why is the left foot forward? Because on the side of the heart, it's to tramp down evil. Yes. The military copied this. Yes. When the military gets ready to march, they say, oh, march! And what foot do you step off on, so yeah. you know, Left foot. And they call, yo, left! granite stone sphinx of Ursa Ma'atras and Tepin Ra. This man is loved even to this day by another culture yes. called Arabs. Yes. There's me and Brother Sharon yes. standing there talking about an awesome site right in front of us. The greatest and largest structure on this planet, right there. The Pyramid of Khufu. The Great Pyramid on the Giza Plateau. Got to kind of stand back from it to get an idea of what it looks like. Because you get up real close, that's <laughs> Sarge Russell over there. <clears throat> Valerie Thomas, they climbed up on it. Are y'all here? Wave your hand, say something. Did you climb up on it? <laughs> Look at our people. There's, there's Brother Brady over there. Elijah climbed up on it. See, and this is some deep stuff, because see, when people look at them and say, like some fool said to me one day, ain't no pyramids over there, yes. and you done stood on it, yes. that's, you don't even talk to that person. <laughs> you don't even speak to that person. You understand what I'm saying? When, when a person says something like that and you stood on it, yes. you just say, like we got, there's just none so blind as he who will not see. This is Minister Mitchell and a brother that was there on the Giza Plateau. Why did this picture, why did we take this picture? Because he was the only black man that we saw in Cairo. Y'all hear what I'm saying? In Africa! The only black man we saw, everybody else were Arabs and French and British and <laughs> Behind the pyramid, you have the house, which Khufu's boat is in, and of course, that's Khufu's boat. This is called the Nuanq, which became, in the Bible, Noah's Ark. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Cities are named after this, called New Ark, like Newark, New Jersey. This is the second pyramid on the Giza Plateau, and you see at the top, there's still some limestone up there. Yes. Our tour guide was careful to let us know that his people took limestone from the mountains to build the pyramids. I didn't want to embarrass him too bad in front of our group, but I pulled him to the side and let him know, your people defaced the pyramid. Y'all wasn't even here when the pyramids were built. Okay? The Arabs are the ones who chiseled all of that limestone off of the pyramids so that they could build their mosques around Cairo. Once you stand there, people, once you get the energy that's still there, can I get a witness? Yes. Those who went, the energy is still there. I mean, this ain't some past stuff I'm talking. Okay, it's still there. As much as they're trying to commercialize it, as much as they're trying to turn it into a tourist attraction to make money, yes, yes. the energy of our black African ancestors is still present. Uh, yes. The reason why I'm standing there on the plateau with the pyramids behind me is because here you see from the sky 
an aerial shot of the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau. Okay? Up in the sky, there's a constellation called Orion. Okay? Those are the three stars of Orion's belt. The ancient Africans were into what's called stellar theology. This is what is meant in the Bible when it says, let your will be done on earth as if y'all got it, y'all got it. It's in the Bible. Amos 5 and 8. What does it say? Go up a little bit. Amos 5 and 8. What does it say? That's okay. I'll wait. <laughs> Amos 5 and 8. It actually tells you to seek this out. Seek him that made the seven stars and Orion. Seek him who maketh the seven stars and Orion. Look at the person next to you and say, that is not Jesus. That is not Jesus. That's African theology. y'all. 
the group that went with us. And y'all, I'm going to tell you the truth, I'm still there, man. Still there. Cairo Museum, guess what now? Guess what? I'm going to show y'all some stuff that y'all couldn't take pictures of. Because they passed the law now. You can't even get that shot right there. Too much evidence. Y'all all right? I'm trying to be cool. No photos. Now when you come in the gate, if you got your camera, they'll take it from you and keep it till you come out. Here you have it, right outside the front of the Cairo Museum. With that left foot forward, with his queen Nefertari standing behind him. Arabs and Jews and others who don't know no better went and saw this and got the idea that the woman is supposed to walk behind the man. That's not what that means. If you notice, the brother got his hands down to his side, guarding and protecting his woman. So what this means is this is my woman. You want to get to her, you got to go through me. That's what that means. Look at this. I mean, look at the balance here. Okay? Contrary to popular opinion. You see, they're sitting on the square. Brother sitting in the posture of the grand master, a worshipful master. And look who's sitting beside him. Not another man. There ain't no balance in two brothers being together. About this whole thing here. Now, this is one of the, this is the largest statue in the museum. What's deep about this statue is the woman is sitting next to her man, but notice where her right arm is. Y'all know what that means? That means I got your back, baby. That's what that means. You ain't got nothing to worry about because my Worshipful master. He can be the grand master. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Here we have, here we, that's right, that's thank you. Here we have the stuff of the Twa people. Y'all might have some relatives that look like that. No extraterrestrial, right inside the museum. This is called the Black Stone. Brothers in the crowd. This is also known as the stone that the builders rejected. That sound more familiar to y'all, church folk? We've been taught that Jesus is the stone that the builders rejected. Uh, this is the capstone of the pyramid. And if you look on the back of your dollar bill, you'll see that that's what's missing on the top of the pyramid. Look at that. I, I had to get that. Yeah. Ain't nothing European about that. No, right. Look at the hair, y'all. Y'all right. see that? Look, 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 look at this. Look at those braids, man. That's evidence. We are proud people. Look, look. Now tell me, this is a brother here. Yeah. That's a yeah. minimum. Yeah. Why do they tear his nose off? Why do they tear his lips off? because they couldn't take what they saw. A black warrior. Black man, this is what they don't want you to become. Here we have the headdress of Horus, the Christ, wearing the headdress of Amun. If you look at that, brothers and sisters, you'll see where the Ten Commandments came from. Y'all see it there? Got to move quickly through time. I'm running out of time. I get carried away here. Because this, I can go on all day with this, y'all. Here's your first trinity right here. Yeah. A song, a set, and 
Peru or Horace. This is the dude that that, that brother was talking about when he said Horace. I ain't know nothing about this. Here's your ancient trinity. But the Europeans got a problem with her. So they got rid of her and replaced her with a ghost. So instead of father, son, and mother, you now have father, son, and Holy Ghost. How can this dude here be unless this woman over here is here? You can't have a son without a mother. This is the original, the oldest statuette. This is in the Nubian Museum. I hope it's still there. I took this picture with my macro, micro lens camera. This statuette is, a, statuette is about that tall. Little tiny little thing. The ancient statuette of a, a set giving suck to the virgin born child, Horus. Now again, didn't actually exist. It's a story. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. Let me tell y'all something. There's no way in the world, no way in the world, that a woman is going to have a baby without penal penetration into her vagina. Or some way to plant a seed up in there. Now the now, now medicine want to, you know, what they call it now, artificial. You know, all that kind of stuff. Back then, ain't but one way, one way to do it, y'all. Now, I got, to, I got to break this one down to you. This is what's called a papyrus drawing. On this papyrus drawing, you have, I don't know if y'all remember who this is. Osiris, sitting on the throne of judgment. Okay, dressed in white. That's why it's called the great white throne judgment in the Bible. Here you have Horus, the Christ. This is the ancient Egyptian or Kemetic version of the European Jesus of the Bible. Y'all following me now? This is the son of this dude over here. Y'all with me? Here you have a brother that's being brought to Osiris. It is in this papyrus drawing and inscribed in stone around Timot where the story came from, no man can come to the Father but by Get the picture? The only way you can come to the Father is Jesus has to bring you. Here you have Kafre, Pharaoh Kafre, and around his head is Horus, the hawk. I just told you, Horus is the Christ, the Christos in Greek, the Mashiach in Hebrew. Christos and Mashiach means the anointed one. So what this means is this brother has the anointing of God upon him. Yeah. Taken from Kenneth, yeah. not from Jerusalem. <laughs> not from some other room. <laughs> Holy Ghost fell upon him. No. <laughs> Here you have what's called the Stella of someone who is not. Here he is laying on the funeral bed. Over here is the hieroglyphic writings of his life story. Guess what we call it today? An obituary. Exactly. Here you see he's, give, he, he's died and having this ceremony and reading his obituary. He's going to judgment. He's standing with his hands raised in this manner, which means I bring or present my cop, my spirit to the Almighty to be judged. He comes before Osiris, you see the scales there, okay? The scales are not tilted, which means he lived an all right life. He goes to Osiris for judgment, and he passes his judgment, and he goes into the heavenly places. Thousands of years old. Ancient 
ancient boat that's still in the museum. The world's first seafaring vessel. This dude is called Mentuo Jack. A blue black brother. He's so black, all you see is the white of his eyes. He's right there in the museum, but they won't let you take these pictures now. Why? Because they're cleansing all of this blackness out of Kim. Look at that, y'all. That's called hair. In the Cairo Museum, there was a letter on the wall in one of the rooms. It's no longer there. This is the letter. It talks about an Egyptian who was a caretaker known as Mahepra. I just want you to see the racism in this letter. It says, uh, let's see, at any rate, they, they, they actually got into this discussion over whether the man was black or not. And it says, at any rate, on the copy of the Book of the Dead, found in the tomb, and now exhibited on the walls of this room, Mahepra is depicted with his face black instead of the normal red. Check out now, it goes on to say, a detailed examination of his mummy, which showed that he died about 20 years of age, also showed that he was Negroid, but not actually a Negro. <laughs> Y'all see it right there? Yeah. Now what's really deep about it is 
And she just read now about some dude called Jacob out of the biblical text. And this is the only place on this planet where something like that exists. The verdict is in, y'all. We've been hoodwinked. We've been bamboozled. We've been misled. Oh, look at here. We were all taught that the children of Israel got their behinds whipped by God in the wilderness because they worshiped a golden calf. Well, there's your golden calf. Right there. Not a figment of somebody's imagination from the biblical text. There it is. And guess what? God ain't whipping no Egyptian behind over no golden crack cat. Let me break this down for you. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Here you got the calf, the cow, known as Hathor, the life giver, the nourisher. Here you have this dude now they got out called King Tut. Now, how many of y'all seen this new image they got of him out now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at that burial mask. See, for a long time, people thought that that's what King Tut looked like. King Tut wasn't gold, y'all. Okay? That's King Tut. Another blue black brother. <laughs> Look at it. That is the foot of his casket. I mean, if you were looking at his casket and just shoot the, you know, it's laying down, you just shoot the foot. If you were to stand it up, it'd be standing on that. Look at the detail. Look how Africans did stuff. That's my art. Yeah. Patak! The God Ptah, an image of the God Ptah to represent the Almighty One who is the Creator. They stole and copied that too. That is. Y'all see it? That's Ptah. That's the Oscars. They copy everything, people. Here you have Pharaoh Akhenaten, the one who is attributed by the Europeans as coming up with monotheistic philosophy. Here you have in the Cairo Museum, the sun with its rays coming down on Akhenaten and his family. I mean, it's just there. See, this is why the white man said extraterrestrials came here. Look at that sister's head, man. That's Akhenaten's daughter. She's not an extraterrestrial. She just had a funny shaved head. A <laughs> sister. A lot of knowledge up in there, boy. Some of y'all's children got that head like that in the back. <laughs> Look at, the, look at the warriors. Look at the warriors in platoon formation. African Waset warriors. Y'all get a chance, I want y'all to study the movie Shaka Zulu. Y'all see where Africans got, look, look at them. Look like, a, look like a platoon of Marines with shorts on. All with that left foot forward. Brothers of the craft, they're your working tools. Got your setting mark, your compass, your swag. If I was to zoom back and show you that whole wall, you see the plumb and everything. All your working tools. Stone masons, here we are at the Temple of Karnak, at the Avenue of the Rams. Not St. Louis Rams. <laughs> All right? 
Here you have Ursa Ma'at Rasa Tempen Ra standing there. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't know if y'all ever thought about this, those of y'all in the Baptist church. When the ushers are on the floor, they stand like this. So now y'all know what they got for. Most ushers who do this, they don't know why they do it. They do it because they were told in training to do this. Okay? And when they pray, they do like this, which represents the position of death in Timothy. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So those of you who are urshers, urshers up in here. Next time you get ready to do this now, think about it, okay? When you ursher him, all right? Here we have in the Temple of Karnak. Now, the Temple of Karnak was devoted to the god Amun. Amun is the one, as I told you earlier, with the headdress of the two tablets. That's where the idea of Moses came from with the tablets of stone, Amen. Here you have again, now this is deep stuff, because you have here Ptah in his burial clothes, Amen. the circle is Ra. So you have Ptah, Amen, Ra. Here you have an Egyptian where the triple crown green gifts offering oblation to the top, I'm in rock. Folks say that, that Hagen's over there making up these names. Man, come on, man. Here it is. This is long, this is way older than any Arabic, Hebrewic, Jewish, Christian. Here it is. Our story. Our story. Closer version of it. Look at these cops. Now, y'all want to see these columns? I mean, uh, maybe I should say a copy of these columns? Go down here on Linda Boulevard. Right. Yes. And what's that big Catholic church down there? <laughs> Cathedral of whatever, Basilica? Walk in there and see, don't you see a copy of this right here? You see a copy of the columns. I put this slide here on purpose because if you notice, they plaster over stuff here, removing the evidence. Look at this. That is not how Africans built the Temple of Karnak. They're disassembling the thing. Africans didn't build the temple like this. Here you have the Tekken or the obelisk of Hatshepsut. That's a very important thing right there, y'all. If you go to any cemetery, you see a whole lot of them. Why? Because it's symbolic of resurrection. 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 I'm going to mess with y'all now. Resurrection. I'm 
prophets at the temple of Karnak. What's so important about this thing? Rise! Eruption. That is, right? This is the God Menes. As you see, he's in his burial clothes. He's wrapped up as a mummy. He's able to get one arm out, brothers of the craft. You see where they got it from. And you see that he's black. That's black. And that's black. He's a black man. Y'all got me? Now y'all see why this is serious. Check, 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 check this out. That's the National Baptist Convention. Headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee. I bet how many Baptist preachers know why that thing is up there on top of their building? It represents resurrection or resurrection or the power of life. Yes. That's why I send the cemeteries to rise from the dead. Look at that. Look at that. Here's where it all started right here. Now right very quickly for those who don't know the story. Osiris was killed by his evil brother Set, which became Satan. Y'all with me? Yes. Set cut up his body into 14 pieces. His wife, Isis, or Aset, went out and found the 14 pieces of 13 pieces of her husband's body. She found all the pieces but one, and that's because in the story, Seth took that one piece right here and threw it in the Nile and the crocodiles ate it. So Seth, I'm sorry, Aset was unable to recover that one piece. So she reconstitutes her husband's body. Y'all got me? Y'all see it back together there? Here's a set standing over her husband. She's got her hand rubbing his head, giving him life. That's the, see, this is the story, y'all, sisters, to let you know how powerful you are. Sisters, you got the touch. That's what this is about. She's got one hand under his head and the other hand rubbing his head. And her energy brings him back to life. He reaches up and he grabs his forehead with one hand and he goes to grab his penis with the other hand so he can make love to his woman. And he realizes that he doesn't have it. So what happens? She says, don't worry about this. I got this. You see here, she transforms herself into a hawk in the form of Horace Hawking, see her bird? She flies up over and hovers over the part of his body where his penis would be, flapping her wings. And the energy from her wings causes him to ejaculate without a penis. And she receives his sperm into her body as a bird. In the Bible, it's called a dove or the Holy Ghost. The bird becomes pregnant, which represents the Holy Ghost, where they twisted it around and said the Holy Ghost impregnated Mary. Here you have Conception without penetration. That's where the Roman Catholic Church copied the story and gave us what is known today as the Immaculate Conception or the Virgin Birth. Because here she is now pregnant, sitting on the birthing stool, getting ready to give birth to a child that she has in her womb without penetration. But it's the story. You see where they stole the story from? Well, that is. 
I told you I was going to tell you why the Washington Monument is so different. Let me show you. Y'all see that thing at the top? See it? Two windows at the top. And they would have to put red lights up in there to represent the red-eyed devil. Why two windows up there at the top of the obelisk in Washington? To remind you constantly that you're in a white man's country. One 
person mentioned in the Bible. Not just Jesus, no, no. We can't find David's burial site. You can't find Ezekiel's burial site, Jeremiah's burial site, Daniel's burial site, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, none of them. Look at the person that you said, I ought to tell you something. The Bible says that they don't know if Moses is buried. I'll tell you why. Because there was no Moses. They copied it from this dude. Thutmosis. The tomb of Thutmosis III. Now it's really deep because these steps here lead to his tomb. And Sharon almost begged us to beg to we go up there. But it was so hot. And I don't want to put people up because this is a very steep climb. I mean, you've got to climb like almost six stories up and about eight stories down into the mountain. Ooh. And it was too hot that day. So since we didn't go, I'll show you what you, look, what, what you would have saw. Here we're going down into the shaft of the tomb of Thutmosis, which is known as Men and Rata Hootie Maze. Yeah, Africans know where Thutmosis is buried. That's where he's buried. That's his tomb. That's his sarcophagus right there. Okay? This is where they stole the Moses that the Hebrews, see, but they don't want you to go see this tomb because if you go see this tomb, then you'll know it ain't. <laughs> Their story. Because this is a black dude here. Real black pharaoh. This picture is important to me because y'all see Valerie? Valerie just cried, 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 cried. And when she just had her Marat Mar Karat experience, and Valerie wasn't the only one. I mean, when we got to the Tombs of Nobles, which you'll see in a few moments, I, I looked around and, and I heard this sound, and I mean, it was a sound coming deep from within somebody. And I looked and I saw Minister Eldridge crying. And I mean, this brother, I mean, he was coming from deep within, and then it jumped from him, and looked like it hit Sharon, and, and then it went from Sharon, and then it, it, it just started going, man, you know, and oh, man. Still excavating, looking for themselves. Funerary Temple of Queen Hatshepsut. Look at that. Y'all see how new that looks? I mean, it looked like we just done a few weeks ago. Y'all might have somebody in your family that look like that, too. <laughs> Here you have the anointing and washing of Queen Hatshepsut. But notice how they chiseled her out. Just completely removed her from the stone. Of course, you see it here again, and you also read about this in Psalm 23, where it says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup run over. The Colossi of Memnon standing as guardians to the valley of the kings. Here's the story of how Pharaoh drove the white folk out of Egypt. Pharaoh Amos, Amos drove the Hyksos, the invaders, out. The Europeans went and saw this story and turned it around and said that here is where Pharaoh's army got drowned. That's not Pharaoh's army. You, look, you, you see Pharaoh there with his arrow? He's, he's, he's killing some folk. He ain't trying to swim. <laughs> These are the people who's being drowned. See they're turned upside down? In the next clip you see it too. They're being turned all upside down. So see, Africans, what they did is they put their story in stone. So you hear Pharaoh driving the Hyksos into the Nakhles River and they're being drowned and the Europeans copied that and made it. Pharaoh's army got drowned. Oh, this is the good one. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, I got to show you this. Here you have, and again, this is at the Temple of Ramses III. Those who go with us next year, you'll see this. Here you have Ramses sitting on the throne. And he prays and he asks God for wisdom as to how to rule his kingdom. So what does God do? God sends him a woman. Y'all missed that 
Bible. He prayed to God for wisdom to rule his kingdom, so God sent him a woman. Her name is Shanu. And here, Shanu reaches up to grab this fruit from the tree. See the tree? <laughs> to give him fruit from the tree of knowledge. Y'all see it, don't you? This is what I mean by evidence, y'all. See, when, when you see it like that and you understand how they stole it, ain't nothing else to be said. She gives him fruit from the tree of knowledge. The Europeans turned it all around and made this Eve giving Adam forbidden fruit. <laughs> now, the woman in this case is not the cause of his fall. In this case, the woman is the cause of his success. Yeah. Going into the temple of Hathor, the cow goddess of nourishment, there she is, the woman with the cow's ears. Oh, let's be ready to good. That's God best. That's the God of dance and having a good time. So you know some black in her. <laughs> That's the Twa statue at the Temple of Hathor, Mom. Now what's really deep is we had a sister with us. And she saw that little statue of Lucas and her whole attitude changed. Those who went to bear with her, she saw herself in stone. And she even assumed the position. <laughs> now, y'all, what's really deep about it, before I could tell her that Bess was the god of dance, she went to dance. <laughs> I mean, and she danced and she danced and she danced. And those who went can bear witness, her attitude was different from that moment on. You know why? Because she saw herself, her esteem from, from people making fun of her because she was short and little and stumpy changed. She that, that let her know she's somebody. And she danced and danced and danced and had a sense of pride for the rest of the tour. And look at Brother Q just laughing out. <laughs> Y'all see you? Everybody was enjoying her because she was in her own Here you have at this temple, and, and we're in Denver, by the way, that's the Zodiac, brothers and sisters, where the, work, the first stellar calendar, right there on the ceiling of the temple of Hathor at Denver. And here's your Zodiac that the Europeans gave us. Now, what's deep about this Zodiac? The sun on the cross. Right here. The sun on the cross of the Zodiac. There it is again. The sun on the cross. There's an old one. The sun on the cross. What about the sun? See, everybody understands the esoteric meaning of the sun but us. Here, in this little tiny room, this is on the ceiling. Here you have goddess Nut. These are her arms. That's her bending over, and she's covering the earth. Notice, people, she swallows the sun. Y'all see it? Yeah. She swallows the sun from her inner mouth, and it travels through her hidden at nighttime. In the morning, she gives birth to the sun. The S-U-N. She gives birth to the sun. 
Now, what's really deep about it is the little room that this is the ceiling of is called the manger. conception scene that's in this temple and here you have Seti teaching his son Ramses about his past and that's what this is this whole wall is his history his story and on the roof of that corridor you see the cartouches here and you see the stars in the sky what does that mean that means that the pharaohs in his family lineage have gone to heaven. That's what that means. And that's what we tell our little children. When somebody dies in the family and a child says, Mommy, where's so-and-so and so? Guess what we say? We say, they're in, they were in the stars. Or they're star now. Standing outside the temple. Again, see, look, this is the kind of stuff I like to take pictures of because it's important, brothers and sisters, that you understand the place of the woman. Here you have the woman with the double crown on of Upper and Lower Egypt. That's what the pharaohs wore. Yes. She's not a pharaoh, she's just a woman. But it's letting, it's letting us know through this depiction how the brother feels about her. It's all right for her to be in power, brother. Let me say it again. Brother, it's all right for her to be in power. But notice what she's doing. When a woman knows that you don't have no problem with her being 
what God made her to be. She can turn around and give you strength. See how she got her head over his shoulders? And supporting him. Get rid of this European male chauvinist spirit. It's strong here in St. Louis. Leaving the temple, Brother Stan Johnson from across the street, Chief, Chief Fire Chief Johnson there. Temple of Horus at Edfu. I took this picture, or of course our, our photographer took it, because we wanted, you know, we asked, you know, our lady, we asked the tour guide, what are they doing? He said, they're making repairs. I said, they're either making repairs or making changes. See how, they ain't black, y'all. They're Arabs. One of the principles about the pharaohs, they didn't play. They did not spare their enemy. See how you got a whole group of them by the head? Getting ready all off with their heads, man. And as long as we had that mentality, Europe could not invade us. But we got kind. We got cordial and opened our arms to our enemy and got rid of that spirit, now look at us. Notice here you have the Pharaoh, here in the temple of Horus and Edfu. These, these are hands, bringing the hands of his enemy, putting it at his feet. And they're bringing so many hands, he want to know, how do I know those are men's hands? Uh-oh. Look at that, all those hands. Y'all see the hands? How do I know those are men's hands? How do I know those are the hands of my enemies? Bring me something to know that they're men. So that's what you did. Oh, see the testicles? Ooh. Now as deep as you see how they chiseled a lot of this away, 1 Samuel 18, 27, David said, bring me the four skins of my enemies. We got a problem though, because there was no David. Where did they copy it from? Right here. Here you see the headdress of Ammon. Now this is important, brothers and sisters. The headdress of Ammon. The symbol of Ra and Horus the Christ. Horus the Christ, which is Jesus in the white man's book. Ra, God, the Son of God. Amen. But he's got on the headdress. This is saying, I and my Father are one. This is where they stole it from. My two arts, for those of you who like martial arts, here's where the fighting arts started, not in China, not in Japan, right here. Africans have been, man, shoot. <laughs> Look at this. Y'all see this? The sun disk. The hawk. in Egypt. Here's the symbol of the United States of America. <laughs> this country ain't got nothing original. <laughs> Y'all see what I'm saying? What's deep is, in the ancient African story, you have the shin and the ox, which means life and peace. And America's Claws, you got arrows, which means warfare. And olive leaves, which means peace, which means we prefer peace, but we ain't got no problem going to war if we have to. The Ark of Ra. How many of y'all have ever heard of the Ark of the Covenant? I got, uh, what do you say, I got 13 minutes here. Man, I'm not halfway through these pictures. Mm. 
the Ark of the Covenant. You've heard of that before? And they taught, in the, taught us from the Bible that as long as they carried the Ark of the Covenant in front of the armies of the Lord, they would be victorious in battle. But nobody can't find one piece of the Ark of the Covenant. Nowhere. Nowhere. So they put out this movie called Indiana Jones. <laughs> Try to make you think that it's secret governments have stolen it and it's hidden somewhere under lock and key. That's to play with your mind. It ain't hidden nowhere. It didn't exist. This is the art that exists. It's still, it's still there, people. In the Holy of Holies, the Ark of Ra is called. Here we are at the Temple of Kumumbo, and it has two doorways, which represents devotion to Sobek, the crocodile god of the Nile, and Horus, the numbering system of ancient Africa. I mean, education, mathematics, yeah. right here. One, those are ones, these are tens, and that's a hundred. And don't the C still mean a hundred? Yes. Today? Oh, man. The Shrine of Imhotep. He was not the evil dude that they depicted in the mummy. Follow this, Africans. Here he is, Imhotep. Now notice how they broke off the whole top of that thing. They don't want you to see his face. You can't say that that's Imhotep for real. And now they're trying to remove it all together. Here you see the wash basin in the operating room. You see prescriptions over here. Here you see the operating table. Here you see the surgical instruments. And if you go to any operating room today and prep for surgery, the instruments are laid out just like this now in the operating room. And you see the maternity ward over there on the left. Y'all all right? Oh, yeah. All right. Good. I put this picture here on purpose because y'all see all this plaster here? How smooth all this is? That's because they didn't cut away a whole lot of stuff, people. I went to that wall looking for an image that was there last time I was there. And one of the reason why I wanted to see that image is because there was proof that it was in Hotep. That image is not there anymore, and there it is right there. And there's in Hotep. <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. When you see your, when you see your genes inscribed in stone, we got folks here to bear witness. I think Brother uh, 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 Zuri Rojo was very upset one day because some white folk came up and asked us, what are y'all doing here? And, and they're right, brother. What are y'all doing? Check this out. White folk came to us and asked us, what are we doing in Africa? So somebody had enough sense to say, because I'm home. Well, what makes you think you home? Look at me. Look at me. I'm in stone. The embalmed crocodile, you know that's some deep stuff, man. <laughs> but that's how much they honored nature. The crocodile was the god of the Nile. This is important. The dam. Here you have what's killing our people. They stopped the flow of the Nile River and put it under their control. They built this dam here, and the dam is much bigger than the pyramid. Here's, I mean, look, look, here's the dam, and look how they restricted the flow of the Nile River. They got two dams, the big, the major dam here, and another dam right here. They got complete control, and that's one of the reasons why the blacks are, being, are dying out, because they can't farm the land. Here we are talking about the tragedy of it. And here, they're talking about power. Blacks are not allowed to get jobs here, only the Arabs. 
restricting the flow of the Nile. Here on the Isle of Philae, we have the Temple of Isis, and we had a beautiful boat ride to get there. Coming up to this temple, you see us getting out on the boat here, and this is as deep. You walk up to the temple, and what do you see? You see a Christian cross that Rome engraved in stone because they went in and took the temple of Isis and turned it into a Catholic church. And the columns, they engraved the Christian cross. Here you see Isis holding the baby Horus. I don't know how well you can see this. Here you have that she's among the papyrus and lotus flowers, reeds. They stole that story, copied it, and put and made it. We just read it. Made it. Moses' mother hiding him among the bulrushes of the biblical text. Isis. Powerful sister. Look at the drawing here. Isis is so awesome. Here she is depicted as having the wings of Ma'at, covering Ptah. That's some deep stuff, people. In this image, she is actually Ptah's mate. Only the white man got a god without a goddess. <laughs> without a goddess. Y'all hear that? Shucks, here it is right here. There's the, there's the man. Ptah got his woman with her wings around him. That's a wonderful thing, man. And look what they did. They couldn't take it. They chiseled that off and went and put it in some museum up in they moved this too. This is that I, I looked for this while we were there. The twelve playing the harp, string instruments, <coughs> playing the tambourine, right. music and dance. Remember? Yes. <laughs> That's in us, man. It's our genes. Now I inserted this graphic. I want y'all to see this. At the, at the Temple of Isis and the Island of Philae, this is called the Pra'ank. Everybody say Pra'ank. Okay. Here you have the symbol of medicine. You have the little disc up here which represents the sun. You have the wings of Ra. You have the pole. And you have the snakes around the pole, which came out of the Bible too. What well, I take it back, they copied from here and put it in the Bible, where God said to Moses, put a serpent up on the pole and tell everybody to look and live. Well, here you have it. Now, look at it here. Here you have the serpent on the pole. Here you have the serpents on the pole. Here you have the sun disk. Here you have the wings of rock. And this is called the per Ankh. Ankh means life. Per means house. So in Kemet, the per Ankh is what we call in America a hospital. You get it, people? Please read Malachi 4 and 2. See, I'm looking here on time. Man, I got four minutes. Hmm. Malachi 4 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings. Isn't that what it said? Yes. There it is, people. So the Son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings. I'm going to move very quickly here now. Here's the tombs of the nobles. We climbed up this little mountain here to go to a sacred place going to the tombs of nobles, entering the tomb, and here we poured libation. Y'all, it was so awesome. Can I get a witness? As we, as we poured libation, you could like hear the ancestors humming in the background. And then we'd, we'd move past our libation table 
and we got a chance to see the skeletal remains of many of our African ancestors still there in a basket. That's where many of our people just lost it. For you brothers of the craft, this is not Hiram Abiff. Hiram Abiff is supposed to be the person who built Solomon's temple. No, no, no. And he got killed by three ruffins who hit him in the head three times. Well, that did happen, but it wasn't no lot, no phony dude named Hiram Abiff. This is Pharaoh Sennacherib, and that's his mom. It was from this that the white man stole the story and created this lie about Hiram Abiff. Can't let up, man, I can't let up. Can't let up, man, I'ma get it. If you with it, let's get it. Can't let up, man, I can't let up. Can't let up, man, I'm about to be back, I'ma wreck this shit, go Got a hundred clip loading in my AR I son, all you niggas, y'all my fucking JRs CT in my squad, I say it everywhere I go Keep the 40 in the coat, have them hanging lobster and roast My flow is clean, just like some snow That rap truth against the grain, I admire That woman pacing landscape for my words Track tires, money, all that I desire Nigga, I'm just getting higher by the mid Check your fit it, oh your bitch, yeah I hit it Getting money, yeah I'm with it Took a breath cause I needed it Got a bad bitch, so conceited it Took her to the crib but she but city did I'm just talking shit, I'm a shit talker Fast and furious like Parker Walker Hit him with a hook, he gon' need a walker Oh man, can't let up Man, I can't let up